we all know it. You start your new website and already have a vision of beautiful, mind-blowing layout. You start coding, but to move forward you need to do one thing. Center this div. You are trying different solutions, but unfortunately nothing is working correctly. Please, no! No! Here we go again. You open Google, find your favorite thread on Stack Overflow, remember something about Flexbox being ok, so you copy it, you try to upvote it for the hundredth time, and then go back to your code. So you copied three lines of code. Is it really that hard to understand and remember that it became a meme? There is certainly something about it that causes programmers to face difficulties. Centering an element may seem like a simple task at first glance, but it can quickly become tricky due to various factors. Well, first let's take a look on how centering is done now. Flexbox provides properties justify content and align items to control the alignment and spacing of flex items along the container's main and cross axis. To center a div within its parent div, all you need to do is add three CSS properties to the parent class Display Flex, Justify Content Center, and Align Items Center. And that's it. An even quicker way to do it is by using Grid. By applying CSS property Display Grid to the parent element, you enable the grid behavior. The grid container is divided into columns and rows forming a grid. With properties like justify items and place items, you can align the grid items along the column and row axis. Just add two properties to the parent class, display grid and place items center. And there you have it, four lines of code for grid and five lines for flexbox. Looks simple. So why are there still problems? Well, there are several reasons for that. Not every person reading websites is a senior frontend developer who fully understands how it all works. Beginners in web development may struggle with using Grid and Flexbox correctly, and setting certain CSS properties often comes down to trial and error method. You might also be a backend developer who wants to create a simple GUI once a while to display data from your super API. And what seems like a straightforward task ends up with another visit to Google. We need to go back in time to see how diff centering was attempted before the era of Flexbox and Grid. Initially, websites were built in a manner similar to how books are created. Text flowed from left to right and images could be added to the text and floated around it using the floating technique. These were the standards and conventions for website creation at the time. And no one was yet thinking about page layout. Over time, people wanted to create more organized and visually appealing websites. They wanted to move away from the traditional text-heavy layouts and they came up with various hacks and tricks. The first approach was to use tables, which allowed for more controlled placement of elements on the page. To center an element on the page, we need to create a table with, let's say, three columns, give them appropriate dimensions, and place the element in the middle column. But this method of creating websites was quite cumbersome. For instance, if we placed an element in the specific location of the screen, that element often had to be divided into smaller parts, each requiring its own positioning. Websites built in this manner ended up with numerous nested tables and become very difficult to maintain. Additionally, tables were not designed for the purpose of structuring the content of the web page, but rather for data presentation. With CSS advancements, different approaches began to be used. One of the methods was using div elements with display table and table cell. One key advantage was the separation of content from presentation. By using div elements, developers could focus on structuring the data semantically with HTML and then apply styling and layout using CSS. This separation improved the maintainability and accessibility of the codebase. Another approach was the use of display absolute and positioning the element center by setting left and top to 50%, but since the div is positioned relative to its top left corner, setting top and left to 50% places its top to left corner at the center. In this example, the content div has a height and width of 100 pixels. In such cases, you can set the margins of this div to half of its height and half of its width, so that now its center aligns with the container's center. However, if we don't know the dimensions of the element being centered, we can use the transform translate property, which does the same job as setting margins. It moves the div 
50% of its width to the left and 50% of its height to the top. The methods I mentioned here were most commonly used during that period, but it doesn't mean they were the only ones. This is the summary of the article from 2012, discussing different methods for centering a diff. The author argues that none of the methods mentioned are inherently complex, but the challenge lies in the fact that there are so many methods available and not all of them are suitable for every situation. This illustrates the problems that were present during that period. There were numerous methods for centering elements and very often some of them didn't work as expected. The advancements in Flexbox and Grid have greatly improved the process of centering elements, offering more intuitive and powerful solutions. This demonstrates the progress CSS has made since that time, making it easier for web designers and developers to create more advanced layouts. But as I said before, not everyone is familiar with CSS Grid and Flexbox, and the challenge of centering divs still persists. And very likely there will be more memes created about it. But you are definitely not one of these people because you reached the end of the video and now you know how to center a div in multiple ways. And you won't have to search it on Google anymore, right? Thanks for watching, bye.